Just like the economy, we had our ups and downs during the 1970s, the good mixed in with the bad. On the one hand, Hamilton National Bank, the city's largest, was declared insolvent in 1976 and was taken over by First Tennessee. City government and Chattanooga citizens were faced with strikes by public employees, public works in 1977, and firemen in 1978. Counties throughout our tri-state area worried about outdated and unhelpful jail facilities and where to get money to improve them. Individually, we worried about the high cost of living, recession, and potential depression. But there were some bright spots, too, that we saw in the 70s. A Chattanooga photographer, Robin Hood, won a Pulitzer Prize for this grabbing picture of a Vietnam vet. And the arts flourished in the Chattanooga area with expansion of Hunter Museum and the purchase of the Tivoli Theater by the city of Chattanooga. And though tourism suffered this year from shortages of gas, on a whole it prospered during the 1970s with a record 13 million travelers visiting our city in 1978 alone. And they had plenty to see and plenty to do. An historical landmark, the Southern Railway Station, was re renovated in the 70s to become the Chattanooga Choo Choo. Alpine Slide and Grand Prix opened, as did a water slide. The Gordon Lee House and the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum. One of the big attractions every year here in the fall is the color cruise. Um, we used to have a steamboat here until about, what, two years ago, two, three years ago. We don't have one now. Did that hurt us? Yeah. We lost it? Uh, yeah, of course, we lost a lot of national publicity that was easier to come by when we had something as unusual as a steamboat. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, it, the color cruise itself, we've shifted gears and more and more people are coming by car. Uh, this year, for example, we had 68,000 people and that's no longer a guess because we actually counted them. <laughs> and uh, we had only, uh, well, I think we estimated two or 3,000 come by boat plus uh, the ones that came on excursion boats uh, of several hundred, I think five or 600 came on the Lake Queen. But we've kind of shifted gears somewhat. However, we're very hopeful that we not only will have one, but we will have several river boats on next year's fall color cruise. We've been talking to some folks that are very much uh, interested in the color cruise because it, it's become a national event. Sports-minded activities abounded in the 70s, and so did individual and collective achievements. For a look at 70s in sports, here's Darrell Patterson. The 1970s were filled with some big sporting events in the Chattanooga area, and probably the biggest single event happened on Saturday night, March 19, 1977, in Springfield, Massachusetts. The Marks and the Jackets go after the Division II title. <laughs> instrumental player last night. There's another guy who was instrumental in last night's win over Sacred Heart, Book McCray opens up with the first two points of the ball game. Coach Ron Shumate on the left, Coach Ralph Underhill on the right. Shumate has already taken off his tie. That's how hot and how close it is here in the Springfield Arena. Miller inbounds, Wood, Wood is dog. Gets it back to Miller. Mock squirming on the press. Miller looks, back to Wood, to Miller again. Counting the time now, counting the time. Get it across half court, McCray steals, down to Gordon. Gordon from the corner. Gordon in the lane. 10-footer by Gordon and UT Chattanooga takes the lead at 48-47. That is the part of the crowd that has come up all the way from Chattanooga, 1,500 miles, to see the Mox win the national title. Ricky Gill shot at the buzzer. Will not count, but it doesn't matter. UT Chattanooga has won the national small college championship, beating Randolph-Macon 71 to 62, and Bedlam has broken loose. The Nets will come down in Springfield. Tears will be shed, and folks are happy. Final score, UT Chattanooga 71, Randolph-Macon 62. The Mox are the national small college champions. The University of Tennessee at Chattanooga has provided a lot of the big sporting events during the past decade. The Ron Shumate era in basketball, which was highlighted by that small college national championship in 77, ended with Shumate's resignation in 1979, and the coming of Murray Arnold as the new basketball boss. The Arnold era will run into the 80s. The 70s will also be remembered as the Joe Morrison era in football at UT Chattanooga. As the 70s started, UTC was struggling in football while Morrison was starring for the New York Giants. After the 1972 season, UTC talked Morrison into hanging up the shoes and moving south to take over the football program here and turn it into a winner. 
It took him four years, but for the last three, UT Chattanooga has been the winningest college football team in Tennessee, that despite some minor racial trouble on the team in 1978. But as the 70s come to a close, so does the Morrison era. Twelve days ago, Morrison resigned as the Mox head coach. He's going to the University of New Mexico to turn their program around. We have UT Chattanooga to thank for some other big sports items from the 70s. The women's sports program, still relatively new, has excelled. The Mock Nets tennis squad won three straight Division II titles before moving up to Division I this year. The Lady Mock basketballers advanced to a high plane, winning the state small college championship last season, then also moving to Division I. Same story for the wrestling mocks. During the 70s, they were one of the most feared teams of the country, coming up with several national champions and All-Americans in 1977 and finishing second in the country in Division II. But UTC by no means has a monopoly on winners here, though. Ron Bishop succeeded Bruce Foster as the head basketball coach at Tennessee Temple during the 70s. And in March 1979, the Crusaders won the championship in the National Christian College Athletic Association. And you want to hear more about our winners? During the 70s, 38 Chattanooga area high school teams won Tennessee high school championships in nine different sports. There is not time to list all of them. But every year since 1975, Girls Prep School has won every high school state golf championship. And it's a repeat in volleyball. No one except Kirkman has ever won a state high school championship. The 70s also brought the return of pro baseball to Chattanooga as the Lookouts returned after a 10-year absence. And it saw Roscoe Tanner from Lookout Mountain make it to the finals at Wimbledon. We look back on sports in the 70s in the Chattanooga area with pride and look ahead to the 80s with anticipation. This is Darrell Patterson. There is no way we could document the 70s without a mention of some other major events that took place, like the time in 1975 when Governor Ray Blanton of Tennessee found that his pie in the sky was actually on his face, compliments of a UTC student. The pie he got creamed with was rather tasty, lemon meringue, in fact, but local officials failed to see any semblance of humor in the incident, and they apologized publicly to the governor. And oh yes, remember when there was such an outcry over the dangers accompanying storage of gas in the back of your car? Well, local officials set up an exercise out on the freeway just to prove that point, and you know what they say about the best laid plans of mice and men. Chattanooga City Commission kept itself busy over the decade. So tight was its schedule that it needed a little time saver to help them make their appointed rounds. And speaking of appointed rounds, remember the night of the UFO? It looked like a cigar shape and it was lit from both ends, just real bright, right down below the treetop level. And Officer Jack and myself started down this bank, down toward it, and it just lifted right straight up out of the out of the trees, just like this, and started northeast. Looked like an inch after it got over, it looked like it got over Rossville Boulevard. There was a plane flying over it, wasn't it, Jerry? There was a plane flying over it, and we called them, told them to call the airport and verify, see what what the object was flying along with the plane. And they they said they called the plane. The plane didn't see anything. The plane kept going northeast, and this thing, right after the broadcast, headed south. And it got down over, looked like it was over Fort Oglethorpe, and just, just out of sight. Where'd you first spot it at? Over behind, Ch over behind Charles A. Bell's school in Alton Park. In preparing this program, we searched through an enormous amount of information on what stood out as the major events of the past decade. Obviously, for the purposes of time, we could not include many of the important items of interest, all of which shaped the history of the 70s. But we have sought to give you an idea of where we've been and some prospects for our future as we gaze into the crystal ball that we will soon know as the 1980s. Have we profited from our mistakes? Have we grown as a community and a state? Can we see our progress in the face of our deficiencies? And can we use that comparison to help us build a better place to live and work? Well, maybe that's the important point to consider. Because what's past is past and can't be changed, only remembered. 
The writer Alexander Smith once wrote, looking forward into an empty year strikes one with a certain awe because one finds therein no recognition. The years behind have a friendly aspect and they are warmed by the fires we've kindled and all their echoes are the echoes of our own voices. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this brief look back into those echoes of the past 10 years and we sincerely hope that the next 10, the 1980s, will be full of peace and prosperity for you all. Good night.